Okay, thank you very much. Good afternoon, uh, students, Highline College students. Um, it is a little bit after two, and we thank you for your patience um, and understanding as we navigate this kind of new normal uh, of uh, virtual Zoom conversations. Um, want to talk a little bit about um, how it's going to go this afternoon. Uh, I'm going to say a few more words and then turn it over to my esteemed colleague, President Mohammed Jama, Jama, and he will um, give his welcome and provide some updates and information um, from our student leadership, our exceptional student leadership. Um, then I will uh, provide some information and then really open it up uh, for questions. Uh, we have questions that have already been submitted, so we want to be able to provide information about that um, and also um, answer questions that may come up. Before Mohammed speaks, I do want to just uh, recognize uh, Mark Lantini from Academic Affairs for his um, help and assistance, uh, great assistance. Um, and getting this together and also just providing so much assistance to our faculty in terms of our uh, emergency remote teaching and service delivery. Um, so many thanks to Mark and his, his area. Um, and also Heather McBean, um, who is doing double duty within the Office of um, Administration and um, the President's Office um, in terms of her organization and making this possible as well. Also on our Zoom conversation um, today is um, Dr. Emily Lardner, is our Interim Vice President of Academic Affairs. She's taken the time to join us. And Vice President, Aaron, Vice President of Student Services, Aaron Reeder, who is uh, Vice President as of six weeks today at the college. So we're happy to have him. Uh, Aaron was um, part of Highland College some years ago in various capacities and now he's back as vice president. So um, they, along with uh, other folks, are going to be able to hopefully answer questions um, and be able to provide some assistance. Um, also, one thing just to, to note is that we're going to do our best we can to answer questions, and there might be some questions that might require some additional research and time on our part. We ask for your understanding, patience, and grace, but we are committed to be able to provide you that information, if not today, immediately after. So uh, thank you very much uh, in advance. And with that, I will turn it over to Mohammed. Thank you, Dr. Mosby and everyone that is here today. Thank you all for coming out and you know joining this amazing town hall. Um, student government has been closely working with Dr. Mosby and other college leaders to ensure that everyone is doing well, that the Highland College community is staying strong. Um, as many of you all know, um, student government has been reaching out to folks through social media and other communication mediums. And our updates for student government includes for you all to take the survey about commencement 2020. As you all know, it's been really difficult navigating through how um, commencement should happen. I sit on the commencement committee and, you know, the best effort and the best measure to take is, you know, using those survey results, which are strictly for students. So if you haven't taken those surveys, I'm <laughs> asking that we all do take it. I, I took that survey. Um, so that includes my report, it's very brief. And if you have any questions, please use the Q&A box. This is a really great time to ask those questions. Yeah. Thank you, Mohammed. And um, if the Q&A box, and then um, we'll definitely be able to chime in and uh, be able to answer. So Mohammed's going to be here for the entire time to be able to answer questions and provide information. Um, what I want to also just um, take a moment and really thank you all, uh, thank all the students. Uh, we know that this has not been a easy time. It's been an extremely challenging time for, for our college and for every college across the country and for many different businesses and areas 
I know you all are very familiar with our current, our current challenges and surroundings. Um, the institution has really tried to really be intentional in our decision making in terms of making sure that our students continue to be served at the highest level possible, knowing that it is very challenging given our current circumstances. Uh, we will continue um, to make decisions and strategize and get input um, to be able to serve our students and serve all of you. Um, and we want to hear from you and, you know, in terms of these uh, town hall forums and then also I know a lot of the communication that I've sent out, um, you know, have people or encouraging people to email ask at highland.edu. That is a web, that is an email address that is monitored daily and is responded to within one to two days from a collection of staff and faculty at the institution um, where you can get questions asked. Um, let us know about any issues or different things that's going on um, and we try to respond as, as quick as possible. So um, we know that it's, it's not easy and we don't necessarily have the immediate answers, but we will definitely work to try to get that information out to you as, as soon as possible. But we thank you for your patience and understanding, but we also, more importantly, thank you for, for continuing your educational goals. Um, we know that there is a goal in mind and, a, and the finish line is in front of you. It might not be this quarter, it might not be this year, but we know that you are making uh, a huge commitment um, despite all the challenges that um, you are currently facing and we're facing within our world. Um, so we want to get you to that point, to that finish line. Um, and we will definitely, we're committed to doing so. We ask that you continue to do what you need to do, um, continue to focus, continue to study, continue to do whatever you can to get there, but also let us know how we can help that path become a little bit smoother along the way. All right. I believe we received a question about financial aid. Um, I could answer that question. Can everyone see the question or? The panelists okay. are the only ones who can see the question. Uh, if you type in an answer, it'll go back to them. If you answer live, just hit answer live and speak. Answer. Okay. Hi. Okay. There we go. Would you like to answer? Yes. Or, yeah, so um, I believe the question was, how do we get in contact with financial aid? This week I had the opportunity to actually help one of my friends get in contact with financial aid. So if you're trying to upload a document or form, if you go to financialaid.highline.edu, you could easily upload a document or form from there, or you could even reach them through email at financialaid at highline.edu. And yeah, so it's, and they are working hard to get back to students and reply from my understanding. I believe that can I, is- Can I add, oh, can yeah. I add to that? Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, so also, hello everyone, um, all of our wonderful students out there. So I wanted to also just kind of chime in on that as well. So you can also reach the financial aid uh, department by calling the main line for the financial aid office, which is 206-592-4856. Although we are um, operating from a emergency remote services, um, we are still answering phones. Um, we've developed a way for all of our programs and services throughout the campus to be able to answer the main line. So if you do contact the main departmental line, you'll reach someone there. Um, and we also have uh, on our website a number of virtual Zoom lobbies that will provide um, a Zoom link. So if you want to connect with a financial aid uh, specialist, you can do it that way as well. Great. 
Okay. Let's see. One question we have is what are the most important lessons learned so far about teaching online? And I would uh, ask that Dr. Lardner could provide uh, some information about that. Sure, it's a great question. And there's a question for you students too about what you're learning about learning online. Um, one of the teachers I talked to over the weekend described the most important lessons they were learning like this. They said they've never worked so hard and they've also never felt like they could connect with students the way they're able to connect with students teaching virtually. So it's a funny combination of lots and lots and lots of learning how to use the technology, but also using the technology to have personal relationships with students. Um, at our faculty meeting tomorrow, we're going to ask faculty to tell us what are the lessons that they're learning about teaching online and what do we need to do as a college to support them going forward because we're going to be teaching remotely for at least another quarter. So we need to learn from what is happening right now and see how we can support our faculty as we go on. Thank you. Thank you, Emily. Let's see. Uh, Izzy, Izzy had a question. Hello, Izzy. Um, regarding the budget health of Highline, are there going to be any effects or budget cuts going forward with higher ed often being one of the first budget cuts being made across the state? Will this be visible at all for students? Thank you. Uh, Izzy is uh, a wonderful student and also editor for our newspaper, um, so provides exceptional questions and I've had a privilege of working with Izzy now for almost two years. Um, so, you know, I will say that uh, budget, budget challenges are what's happening not just throughout our system and state, but throughout the country and if you are probably seeing Articles from across the country, institutions are having to ha make some budgetary decisions, strong budgetary decisions, uh, especially in our four year institutions. For us, we are currently looking at um, our budgetary projections for the remainder of this year and then looking at what we're going to receive next year in terms of funding from the state. That's going to require us um, to be a little conservative. Um, and very intentional in terms of our uh, financial responsibility in, in our budgets. Um, so far, we have um, we have uh, currently um, put a, a hold on hires, with the exception of um, essential critical. I would say critical hires. Um, that are needed. So we have positions that we're putting on hold for for some time uh, indefinitely um, because we want to make sure that we're being fiscally responsible. Um, we are also um, not, you know, not allowing travel and some other budgetary things to to save on cost. Uh, we really don't know, to be quite honest with you, what the forecast is going to look like. We had just met earlier today, our executive cabinet, which is consists of our executive directors and our vice presidents. So the executive leadership of the college. And we are in constant communication with one another and discussions about the budgetary and fiscal outlook for the institution. Once we have more specific information and some actions going forward, we will definitely inform the entire institution and the entire institution, I mean students as well. Um, so we don't have a lot of information to share at this point because we're just trying to look at the information and try to forecast. But as soon as we get that information and been able to firm that information out, we will definitely um, notify the campus in various uh, ways. So thank you for that question. Uh, one other question is, are we coming back to Highline in May or September? So 
This is a couple of questions we received in advance actually uh, were similar type questions. Uh, currently, because of the governor's uh, order, we are um, not able to do face-to-face -face instruction, but um, what we at the institution are calling uh, emergency remote teaching and service delivery, which means that many of our programs and uh, services and uh, instruction is on a online type format. Um, that will continue for the remainder of the quarter. Uh, we, we definitely um, want to honor what the governor is saying. And um, even though his, he's going to provide us some guidance come first week of May of what, what our next step is going to be, um, in fairness to students, staff, and faculty, we've continued to have um, online or that emergency remote teaching and service delivery for the remainder of the quarter. Uh, because we, we already had done a major shift earlier um, because of the governor's directive. We don't want to do a major shift back automatically within, and then have a few weeks left of the quarter. In terms of September, um, we again are waiting to get some guidance from the governor, um, but there will be information going out later this week in terms of what, how instruction and service delivery is going to be for the summer and for the fall. So I would encourage you to um, check your, your email in the upcoming days where specific information will be coming out. Um, there's another question saying, why is the College Weekly newspaper not online? Um, if I was, I was under the impression that it was online. Um, so I can check with um, our student newspaper and our college newspaper and see if there's, uh, just get clarification on that. So I'm more than happy to do that and be able to follow up. So I do have some other questions um, that were provided uh, in advance that I'm happy to go over right now. And for students, if you have questions that are coming up, feel free to continue to put them in the Q&A box and we will, as a group, get to them and respond as soon as possible. Um, so one of the questions we received, and I'm going to just pop it up on my, my second computer right next to me is um, what are the current proposed timelines for on-campus instruction? If certain criteria are not met in regards to the spread of COVID-19, especially after summer quarter, when experts have indicated we could see a second bell curve and apex in cases and deaths, what is the college planning to do? For interior design and drafting design students will we be able to screencast and use the school's lab computers and programs remotely from home if and when we return to campus. So the second part of that question, I'm gonna have Dr. Lardner be able to speak to. Uh, the first uh, part of that question is pretty much what I, similar to what I had said before. Um, the college is doing everything and planning um, for our campus to be clean and safe so that when we're able to come back, and when I say come back, be physically being able to be on campus, uh, we would be able to um, operate and function. Um, you know, in terms of the, the se a possible second round, um, there's been a, of, of COVID, there's been a lot of discussion about that. And then there's also been discussion um, about that that not happening. So there's a lot of information right now um, around COVID that we're also, all of us, I think, in the country and the world are trying to sort out. Um, the institution will be ready to address um, how, uh, how we can serve our students and how we can be healthy in that, in, in terms of our decision making, in terms of serving students, um, as we continue to get information and the directives from the governor. You know, Governor Inslee does provide that information to us, and then we will adjust and adhere to those directives and 
again, uh, we have an emergency operations unit that meets weekly to discuss everything from social distancing to quote unquote reopening the campus. And so physically people can be back on campus. Um, so we are definitely keeping that in mind. Um, but again, in terms of uh, when we're going to be able to be back uh, until the governor tells us to, um, until May 4th at least, um, we are not gonna be able to be physically on campus. The governor could extend that. He could stop that. He could extend it for the remainder of the quarter into June. He could let us know that we could come back, but it's really depending on him. So when we're back on campus, really is always connected with the directive of the governor. And Dr. Larn, if you could speak to that second question, the second part of the question about um, interior design, and I'll reread re it. For interior design and drafting design students, we will be able to screencast and use the school's lab computers and programs remotely from home if and when we return to campus. We, um, it's a, that's a hard question. We're having, we have been having troubles figuring out how to give students access to the sophisticated software that we have, specialized software that we have in some of our computer labs. So I don't know the answer to that question. We're working on it. We're, we're doing the best we can. Um, and whatever we can figure out for this quarter, we'll know better how to do it next quarter. But that's a, um, and I'm happy to circle back to the coordinator for that, those particular programs to see what we can do with screencasting earlier, we were still struggling to provide students with access to the software they needed in those programs. Thank you. And for the individual, again, these were submitted without names, which is no problem, it's anonymous. Uh, if a person is on, on the uh, Zoom call right now listening in that wrote that question, you are more than welcome to email me directly your contact information and we can make sure that we provide that update to you as soon as we find out. So you're more than welcome to email me directly. Thank you. Um, commencement, there's a couple questions around commencement. Um, we have folks that are excited to graduate and are trying, wanting to know, you know, if we are, how are we going to handle graduation? Is it gonna be um, via Zoom or in person? And at this point, um, as Mohammed had said earlier, it encouraging us, and there'll be another student remind, reminder going out to students about commencement. It's important for people to fill out that survey and there's options there. And then there's also a question to add, a uh, question to provide uh, information in terms of how to honor our, our students, how to honor our graduates. Um, this is, again, a very challenging time and different colleges throughout the country are doing very different things. And before we make a decision for our institution, we want to make sure that our student voices are heard. So we, again, um, ask that you, uh, if you, if you've already completed that survey, thank you. If you haven't, um, please uh, complete it. The more information we get, the better. And the survey uh, will be up. I believe all week. And um, again, if you haven't completed it yet, please do so. Um, I know I've been able to check and we've had students so far do it, a good number. Um, of course, I want as many people as possible. So students, you will be getting multiple email reminders this week. Uh, so please do that. Thank you. Uh, let's, there's a question that came through. I'll jump to that. Uh, will the current, this is an excellent question. Um, will the current courses in healthcare be updated in real time for the health lessons being learned in real time? I'm looking at you, Dr. Lartner. Um, yes, and that's a wonderful idea. Um, if you're in respiratory care, you already are being updated all the time. Um, faculty are saying that even if they don't mean to, they're making references to COVID-19. It affects our healthcare courses. It affects all of our courses across the curriculum. It has to do with supply chain. It has to do with sociology. It has to do with the psychology of being in quarantine. It has to do with childcare and early learning. So 
this epidemic or pandemic is touching all parts of our lives. And one of the ideas that Dr. Mosby um, brainstormed is, which the, um, we think is exciting, is when everyone is allowed back on campus to do a festival of learning. So students who are working on in different disciplines and in different programs have a chance to talk about what is it, what, what about psychology and COVID-19? What about ethnic studies and COVID-19? What about business technology and COVID-19? What are we learning from all these different perspectives about this pandemic that is affecting everyone? And of course, healthcare courses need to be updated in the same way. It's changing everybody's understanding of health and healthcare and public health. It's a great question. Uh, here's another one for you, uh, Dr. Lardner, uh, it's in your area. We have a question, how do we return or extend borrowed library books? It's a great question. It, my, the last time I talked to Jerry Ventura, the director of the library, um, when you can come on campus, you can drop them off at the Dropbox. But for now, we're not worried about collecting the library books and you're not going to be charged for keeping your library books because you really can't. Um, you can't bring them back yet. So hang on to them until you can. When you can, we do want them back. And I hope that all the students here um, answer Jerry's email about, do you need a book on reserve from the library? That was another way the library was trying to reach our students. Since you all can't come in and borrow books, Jerry wanted to know what books can we send to you? So um, I hope you got some books that way. For now, just hang on to your books and we'll collect them when we can. Thank you. Mohammed. I wanna make sure, uh, given that you have time to, to, to speak or if you wanna provide clarification or you wanna add. So uh, chime in if you want, if, if not, it's all good. I just wanna make sure. So that's the, you know, we gotta, we gotta bond together, president, 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 so. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, I see that there's so many students, it, participants today, and I would want to also encourage you all to apply and run for student government offices. Um, the applications are uploaded in cls.highline.edu. I will be posting the link in the chat box. You could copy and paste it and start the application to run for either vice president, president, or even any other leadership opportunities at the Center for Leadership and Service. Let me post the link. It's right over here. Are you typing it in, Mohammed? Oh, perfect. Okay. Thank so, you. Yeah. You'll find the elections packet, and I'm determined that everyone and every student is qualified to run and help replace us. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I, you know, I want to make sure, and I, I, I hope I didn't skip over any questions. Um, was there a software question? I'm, I'm gonna ask Mark, was there a software question that was asked early at the beginning and I and I, and I accidentally skipped over it or anything or did we answer it? No, I think that was the one about the interior design. That was the one okay. I saw. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, just wanted to check. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is a question and I, I'm hoping that um, our vice presidents can speak to it. Um, we had a student who had to drop a college course last month because of health reasons um, and asked, would it be possible to retake the course next year? I don't know if it's next quarter, but next year at no additional cost. 
um, because the because it was a health reason why the course was dropped before. So I would, I mean, I would start off by saying um, within the student services uh, departments, um, especially with enrollment registration, we do have our appeal process um, that's in place for students when hardships come up. Um, I certainly would say that this is one of those hardships that you could um, be able to uh, fill out an appeal for. We are working um, on trying to figure out the best ways to support our students as we know many of our students are going through a lot during this time. And so, you know, I, I would say the initial piece is to start there with completing an appeal to just be able to formally submit uh, a document uh, to our enrollment and registration office that just lets them know you had this particular hardship. And, um, you know, we're, we're trying to work through what's going to be beneficial and how we can serve students moving forward. Um, you can always re-register for the course. I think we're just going to be trying to figure out, you know, how can we support those students that, you know, we know funding is a, uh, is a concern. So I don't have the full answer um, on that one, but uh, I will say at least begin the process of submitting an appeal for the class that you weren't able to complete. And um, we can go from there. And I don't know, uh, let's see if I can provide the information on where you can submit that. <clears throat> I'm just trying to pull this up really quickly here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can connect with our uh, registration office and the contact information. You can go to uh, registration at highline.edu. Um, you can also uh, dial 206 592 3242. And you'll be able to connect with someone there that can help with, uh, with getting that started. Great. Actually, Aaron, if you don't mind, uh, can you put that in the chat? Sure. The contact information would be great. And actually, since we're talking about that question brought up, you know, funding. Um, I know we are still putting in place our procedures uh, for CARES Act, but do you mind, Aaron, um, just giving a, a brief overview of the CARES Act, um, since you wrote a very good detailed email uh, last week, if you could just share a little information with our students. Obviously, more information is coming, but a, uh, a introduction would be wonderful. Thank you. Sure thing. I will, I will attempt my best to do a brief uh overview without going too far down the down the rabbit hole but um, the college will be receiving um, some uh, care it's called the cares act uh, funds which is a uh, coronavirus uh, relief aid that will be coming to the college and with those funds there is a portion that is set aside to provide uh, support and emergency resources to our students and so given that information uh, we have been able to pull together a number of uh, uh, folks from across the campus who do extensive work right now with uh, emergency resources. And that group is really working on uh, really trying to build the, the process that we know is going to be effective and beneficial for our particular student population, for you all. And so we're looking at the application process. We're looking at what the eligibility criteria um, you know, I will say that the funds does come with, you know, some guidelines and uh, parameters that we have to kind of consider while, while um, building this, but we are definitely in the works of working very swiftly um, with intentionality so that way we can provide the right amount of support for our students. And so we know that the, uh, this uh, pandemic has been uh, impacting our student body heavily. And so uh, these funds are going to be beneficial. We are just really trying to work on the best way to uh, provide the resources to students. So more messaging will be coming out. Um, I will say that we're, we're pretty close to um, almost having our, a plan fully developed, but it's in the making. And as soon as we have that plan in place, we will have a full on messaging 
uh, campaign to go out to our students and be calling and reaching out and emailing. So please be on the lookout uh, for that in, uh, in the weeks to come. And I know there was a question that came through um, about, about the funding, and this was from one of our international students and um, the type of help coming from the funding. And right now, again, as, as Vice President Reader was talking about, um, we are looking at um, all the, the rules and policies and ways that we can distribute funding, but we're also trying to put together a process for our college in terms of how to assist students. So once we have that finalized, we can be able to communicate that uh, to the entire institution and of course our students, um, because we want to make sure that students have the opportunity to not just understand about it, but um, apply, for, apply for assistance. So thank you very much, Aaron. Um, let's see. Okay. Um, Dear Dr. Mosby, it seems like online studying is going well so far. So if this pandemic will be a problem for our normal academics. Do you all think about a way of visual learning from now on, like any plans to, sorry, like any plans to stay ahead of the game because a lot of older people cannot are not able to struggle to learn this fast technology and how they will succeed. Um, this student indicated that they are worried about the people who don't have access they need or don't know how to use it. Um, and another question, um, a recommendation uh, that this student provided was, when we get back to normal, I will encourage our school to keep and make a plan for practicing social distancing guidelines um, throughout our website and on campus so people continue to be aware um, when we get back that we should not be having close contact with one another. Um, and a recommendation to have new hand washing stations in more places of sanitizers. I hope everyone is staying healthy and happy. So for that individual, thank you so much for that information. Um, you know, I, I, I'm going to break it up into three different, three different areas and say that one of the things that we really struggle with our executive cabinet and our staff and faculty is um, not because everybody, not everybody has technology. Not everybody has the level of technology. So we have been asked every institution across the country to shift from primarily face-to-face -to, -face to this um, different type of instruction and service delivery almost overnight. And that has been a huge bear for our students um, to shift in that thinking, but it's also been an extremely challenging time for our faculty and for our staff um, because this, because we're not, in, we're not an online college. If we were, if we all wanted to be at an online college, we would be at an online college. We're, we're, we're not. And Highline prides um, itself on being able to provide that face-to-face -face comfort and care for our students and to, and to one another. So many thanks to, to Tim Rye in our ITS area. Uh, for example, for sending out surveys, and those students might have received a survey. Uh, a few thousand of you responded, thank you, thank you. Our staff and faculty uh, uh, was provided a survey to be able to, to get a better understanding of what is needed from technology. So we're not even talking about funding right now, but we're just talking about technology because this, this divide that is existing within education is very multi-layered. So just from a technology standpoint, we have been able to see what students, staff, and faculty have needed, because we have staff and faculty who are struggling too um, and don't, ha don't have the resources. So again, many thanks to, it's a number of people, but I will say uh, special thanks to ITS and Tim Rise area for leading the effort and kind of being the glue from all the different resources on campus to be able to provide equipment to our students so they can come and pick it up in a come up, pick it up and leave um, capacity and for being able to provide equipment to our um, staff and faculty. 
So that's one way we've been able to address it and continue to address it. In terms of the funding piece, um, as Vice President Reader talked about, um, the CARES Act will help and assist in addition to our emergency funding that we have through foundation and again, identifying other areas, but knowing that uh, we have a lot more need than the type of funding that we do have. So we're constantly trying to make sure and identify resources that can best assist our, our students. And then for our students who do require a little bit more time um, to, to navigate this, this remote kind of learning, um, we have our faculty are ready to assist, our staff are ready to assist, um, our division chairs that work with the various faculty in our academic unit are reaching out to get information from our students to check in and see what's going on. Um, this is another example of us trying to provide and in get information from our students. Um, we will be uh, students will be contacted through our Highline Cares campaign. Um, another way to provide information to see how students are doing because we also understand that students aren't necessarily always going to say publicly what they want. And I totally get that and I understand that. So we wanna make sure we have intimate settings one-on-one -on -one where we can get, be able to get information and have conversations in terms of how to best assist our students. So um, definitely working on that. In terms of when we get back to normal, whatever that looks like, we definitely wanna practice social distancing guidelines. I think that our, our, our future is gonna be different. And I think we, we're gonna be uh, mindful and I think things are going to be set up a little differently in terms of how we maneuver, how we walk around. It's going to be not just on campus, but how we go to the store, how we go to the park, how, how we exercise. Um, it's, it's really challenging us to think about things differently and um, to make sure that we're healthy and making sure we're sharing the health, health of others we need to continue practicing some type of social distancing when we're back on campus. And um, our institution it has, is mindful of that and we'll be working to um, provide that information for the campus community. And lastly, uh, I will work with our uh, facilities folks on um, looking at and ordering more hand washing stations and sanitizers. I know that that is something that has been, they have put that on order. Um, that's something uh, when this first happened that we have been talking with our uh, facilities crew about. Um, currently there's some backlog, so we have some challenge, challenges with that because everybody's doing that. But uh, long after uh, this ends, we definitely wanna increase um, the safety of our campus. So we're gonna definitely look at expanding those and getting more of those areas, more of those, um, uh, items on our campus. And anything else that comes up, you can always let my office know. You can always send it to ask at highland.edu. Um, those are great information. So for the individual who sent, who sent me this, uh, thank you very much. Um, let's see. What is happening to international students now at Highland College? Well, our international students, uh, many of our international students have made the decision to want to be with their families. Um, and they, some have, have made that option and have decided to, to leave, which makes sense. We want to support all the decisions our students make. Um, it's very different from the majority of our students that live at home and come to campus, but we do have a collection of students that are not, uh, from here and are far away. We have some students who live on campus um, in, the, uh, in our campus housing and some of them have decided to leave and then we have some that are staying. Um, but we have housing staff that is assisting with the students, providing support as they did before COVID-19 and will we'll continue to do so. For students who don't have access to laptops or internet, what is Highland College planning to do about it? Um, again, as I said a little earlier, um, we have the, the um, surveys that our staff and faculty and our students filled out to assess uh, one's needs. Um, 
if you have not completed that survey, uh, please let our op my office know. I, I, I don't know if that survey still, I think the survey's still out. Um, we could still send a reminder. We can do something about that. Um, but um, I would- The survey's still out, but Mark also posted a link in the chat that they oh, can go perfect. find it. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Tim. So um, that is the way, that's one of the ways, our main way of being able to get information, get find out where our students' needs are. Um, so I'd encourage every student um, to complete that survey, even if you have um, the access, but to fill it out, because we just need to know from our campus um, what our students need. And then will people visiting the campus have their temperature checked? Um, that's a good question. And right now, um, we are in discussion to determine what will happen when the campus reopens. Um, you know, for if anybody sets foot on the campus to have their temperature check, that requires a lot of planning. Um, remember, our campus is an open campus. So, um, you know, in more secure areas, walking through, getting your temperature checked at certain places can be, you know, that can, that's easier to be able to handle. Uh, we have to ask ourselves um, if that's something that we feel like the institution needs to do, but we also want to make sure that we get guidance from the CDC, guidance from our respiratory care folks as well, that's going to help guide us. Because we also want to make sure that our processes and different things that are in place is to be perceived as helping students and helping staff and faculty, and we want to make sure the message is appropriate. Um, so that is part of our planning for when student for when the campus reopens and um, if there are extra precautions that we will in, we will definitely enforce we will let folks know prior to when the campus reopens. Um, I would like to add on to the I think it was the previous questions on um, students getting the resources they need. Um, so student government is currently working on creating a scholarship emergency aid opportunity for students that do need those resources. So we soon hope to release um, or at least propose to our student council the relocation of unused funds for programming in order to respond to the resources that students need in order to finish this quarter successfully and strong. So what we're trying to do is create a scholarship um, solely based on Highland College. So that would go, it would be money going into your account and then you could use those resources for, in order to check out a laptop or anything else at Highland College. And I will be sharing, we will be sharing everyone, everybody with that information online as well as um, all the social media accounts. But yeah, keep an eye on and keep the lookout on for um, those scholarship funds. And it'll be small leadership scholarships that you will be needing to apply for, but we hope to expand it and as well as give it to every student that needs it. Thank you, Mohammed. Let's see. That is pretty much all the questions that uh, we received in advance. A couple of them were the same, were about uh, commencement. Um, for the participants that we have on right now, uh, any last questions? The questions, by the way, have been great. They've been excellent. Um, the ones in advance and the one today, the ones today. Uh, there is a, a a gentleman a person named Dan, and Dan, you have asked some very, very, very good questions. Um, I mean, everybody has, but you've asked some very good ones. You get the gold star for today, let me tell you. Um, but I will say that these questions uh, that you're asking really represent a high level of care and understanding. I know that you all care about this college um, and that shows definitely um, and the questions you're asking shows that you're well aware of the many challenges that are affecting all of us. Um, and we really appreciate that because we take these questions back and your concerns and we think about what we can do because some things we might have to change 
you know, we might have to change immediately, right? And sometimes we think certain things are working and you all let us know it, it, it's not working the way it should and we will adjust uh, uh, accordingly. Um, know that we're gonna be doing another um, uh, President's Town Hall check-in uh, next month, uh, which is coming up very, very soon. And we'll be doing one in June as well, right before, ex um, right before uh, exams. Um, also know that you can email ask at highline.edu with any kind of questions or concerns. You can always contact me directly and email me. Um, you can also, if you wanna set up a Zoom call or you want me to give you a call on the phone or something, you can always contact my office and I'm more than accessible um, and, can have, and can make time work. So um, bottom line is we wanna hear from you whatever way possible, whatever way you feel comfortable and we are committed to your success. Um, and we are committed to your success when this COVID-19 passes us. And I look forward to a time where we can all celebrate on campus, um, to be on campus. Um, one of the things I've told many people, so they, especially people on this call, they probably tired of me hearing. One of my biggest joys as president is to be able to walk around our beautiful campus and to just see our wonderful students, the best students in the state and the best students in the country. And to be able to walk around and see them um, is always a daily joy that I had. So it saddens me um, that we're not able to do that, but it gives me hope that we will be able to do that in the near future. So thanking you very much. We are pretty much at almost at three o'clock. Um, thank you so much for your patience. Um, again, this is this is learning uh, a lot of new things. Um, it, it's great. I rather have done it in our student union and had boxes and boxes of pizza and cupcakes and juice to be able to provide. So virtually, just kind of imagine that if you can, and uh, hopefully we can do that in the near future. But I want to take time and thank Mohammed. Um, thank Dr. Lardner, Vice President Reeder, uh, Tim from ITS, Mark Lentini from um, Instructional Design, um, Heather McBean from Admin Services slash the President's Office, Amy Snyder from the President's Office, who has been, been quiet in the background, but always provides such stellar support. And above all, your students, thank you so much for taking the time, 35 of you, to be on the Zoom call today. And with that, have a great rest of the week. Please keep in touch and be safe. Thank you.